We often think of air as harmless, light, invisible, empty, but in buildings, air can be one of the most powerful forces there is, driving pressure, heat, and moisture through the smallest cracks, determining whether walls stay dry or begin to decay. In modern light frame walls, we need an added air control layer to do what dense, massive materials once did naturally, keep air and the moisture it carries out of the structure. Air can carry a surprising amount of water. Even in the middle of winter, when air feels bone dry, it can still move a huge amount of moisture. Here's the thing. What matters isn't relative humidity. It's absolute humidity, or the actual amount of water that's in the air. Warm air can hold way more moisture than cold air can. So when warmer air leaks into a cold wall and cools below its dew point, that vapor turns into liquid water. The amount of moisture moved by air leakage can be massive, enough to quietly soak a wall from the inside out, even when there's no visible leak at all. Inside of a typical home in the winter, the air might be like 21 degrees Celsius at 35% relative humidity. That's about six grams of water vapor per cubic meter. Outside, in a place like Manitoba, it might be like negative 20 degrees Celsius at 70% relative humidity. But that air holds only about 0.6 grams of water vapor per cubic meter. So even though the relative humidity outside is higher, the actual amount of moisture in the air outdoors is much lower than the air indoors. When warm indoor air finds even tiny gaps and leaks outward, especially in the upper parts of the building where pressure is highest, it carries moisture with it. As the air moves into colder layers within the wall, it cools, reaches its dew point, and begins to deposit liquid water, sometimes even forming frost when temperatures drop below freezing. So for example, if that 21 degrees Celsius indoor air cools to around five degrees Celsius, it reaches its dew point and it becomes saturated, depositing water inside of the wall. Over time, this hidden moisture can wet materials, feed mold growth, and cause decay deep inside of a wall. Even a small five millimeter gap under just five pascals of pressure can move liters of air and grams of moisture into a wall every day. Now let's flip the scenario. On a hot, humid summer day, outdoor air might be 32 degrees Celsius at 70% relative humidity. That's about 24 grams of water vapor per cubic meter. Indoors, the conditioned air might be at 24 degrees Celsius at 50% relative humidity. That's around 11 grams of water vapor per cubic meter. That moisture-laden outdoor air only has to cool by about six degrees Celsius to reach its dew point, which is around 26 degrees Celsius. So when that air leaks inward through cracks and cavities, and then meets a cool surface within the wall assembly, for example, an air-conditioned uh, surface of drywall, it can quickly reach saturation and condense inside of the wall. This inward movement tends to happen near the top of the building, just driven by natural pressure differences. Even a few grams of water per day can add up to liters over a cooling season. In modern light frame construction, the challenge is stopping the air from sneaking through the tiny cracks and joints. That's the job of what's called the air barrier. It's the layer that's meant to prevent warm, moist air from leaking into the colder parts of the wall. In most modern buildings, this job is usually handled by one of a few systems. It might be a polyethylene vapor barrier on the warm side of the wall that's usually meant to stop vapor diffusion, but in practice, it often ends up acting as the main air barrier as well. It could be something like a, a taped exterior sheathing like plywood or OSB with really carefully sealed seams. It could be house wraps and building membranes uh, like Tyvek, which are designed to block air while still allowing vapor to pass through. The goal is simple, to keep air from moving through the wall at all because wherever air moves, moisture moves with it. 
but in practice, it's anything but simple. These systems rely entirely on craftsmanship. At every joint, staple, and seam, it needs to be perfectly sealed. And if both the interior vapor barrier and the exterior air barrier are fairly vapor tight, for example, even a single missed detail, a staple hole, a loose outlet box, or a gap in the tape can undermine the entire system. When air and the moisture it carries get in, but that moisture can't get back out, the wall begins to fill from the inside. A rain screen is a wall system designed with a small vented air gap behind the exterior cladding. It's used in a lot of our modern light frame buildings today. It's a system that's designed to help those layered, moisture-sensitive walls survive the forces of wind and rain. The setup is simple. The outer cladding, often wood, vinyl, or fiber cement, for example, is fastened to vertical strapping that creates a narrow cavity between the siding and the wall behind it. Behind that cavity sits the water-resistive barrier, often the same membrane we mentioned earlier, like Tyvek or another house wrap that's designed to block air and also the water while allowing vapor to pass through. So that barrier is applied over the sheathing, which is usually like OSB or plywood. Just to recap the layers of the rain screen, on the very outside is the cladding. That's what you see like brick or wood or vinyl, which sheds most of the rain. Behind that, you've got that narrow air gap uh, created with furring or strapping attached between the exterior cladding and the sheathing inside of that. Uh, behind the air uh, gap, you've got the water and air resistive barrier, uh, which is attached to the sheathing like OSB or plywood. So rain screens could easily have fit into the episode on the water control layer because they do handle drainage of water that get, does get passed through the exterior cladding. But they're also about balancing pressure and managing airflow, which is why I decided to include them in this episode. When wind-driven rain hits a building's exterior wall, it creates positive pressure on that wall's exterior cladding surface. In a light frame wall made of thin layered materials with many potential hidden pathways, that pressure can drive both air and water through tiny little cracks. But when there's that vented cavity behind the cladding, its air pressure stays in balance with the outdoors, reducing wind-driven moisture intrusion while giving an upward gentle airflow that helps to keep the wall dry. So in other words, the vented cavity acts both as a drainage plane and as a pressure moderator, managing water and air together. But the thing that's often missed with rain screens is proper detailing at the top and bottom. If it's left open, the gaps become entry points for insects and rodents, nesting birds, so the cavity has to be screened and flashed in a way that allows airflow and drainage but keeps the pests out. The rain screen is a brilliant innovation. It's a way to give layered, moisture-sensitive walls a little forgiveness. But the level of detailing and craftsmanship it takes to make it work is a reminder of just how complex modern wall systems have become and how dependent their success is on getting every detail right. It's worth mentioning that airflow in buildings is strongly influenced by what's called the stack effect. I mentioned this briefly in the earlier examples when we looked at how warmer moisture air moves outward in winter and inward in summer. The stack effect refers to the natural buoyancy of warm air rising and escaping through the upper parts of the structure. This pattern can reverse in summer when the air inside is cooler and denser than the air outdoors. It is a key force in how air moves through buildings and it actually really deserves its own deep dive. So I decided that we'll explore it in an upcoming video, just in the interest of keeping this episode at a manageable length for y'all. All of these forces, wind, pressure, stack effect, and the extensive detailing needed to keep air out of the walls shows how delicate most wall systems really are. Rammed earth answers the same challenges with quiet resilience not through perfection, but through simplicity. Detailing still matters, of course. Joints around windows, roofs, and service penetrations still need proper gaskets or sealants and regular maintenance to keep those connections sound. But the wall itself, it's doing most of the work. 
dense, solid, and free of the stud cavities that let air snake through conventional walls. There's no need for rain screens or taped seams or perfectly sealed membranes to keep air from moving through the walls. It's simply a massive wall that doesn't let air or the moisture it carries move through it. Rammed earth handles air not through layers or technology, but by its very nature. It doesn't approach air tightness, it simply is. Elegant in its simplicity. If water does find its way into a modern stick frame wall, the next question is, how does it get back out? That's where the vapor control layer becomes an important consideration. In the next episode, we'll explore how vapor moves quietly on its own, even when the air is still, and how modern construction has tried to address it. And we'll see how rammed earth deals with vapor naturally. If you're enjoying this series and learning something new, I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment below. It helps shape what we explore next. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss the next exciting episode on vapor and how it ties into the bigger picture of healthy and resilient design. See you next time.